Welcome to r slash malicious compliance where OP gets his boss fired. During holidays, my brother usually stays in his room and minds his own business. He doesn't like to interact with people and stays at his room watching anime. When school holidays come, my mom gave us chores to do, like throwing trash, cleaning the plates, and vacuuming the house. And he wanted to throw out the trash, but my mom instructed him to vacuum the house to exercise. He's overweight, but not obese. He argued, but lost to my mom. <laughs> the next day, at 5am, he woke all of us up by vacuuming the house. My mom asked him what the hell he's doing and he replied that he was vacuuming the house. My mom wasn't impressed and told him to sleep, but at 5.30am he woke all of us up again with a vacuum. <laughs> he claimed he had slept for 30 minutes and was eager to vacuum the house. My mom then gave in and told him to just throw the trash out every morning. Our next reddit post is from Art of Roast. To start, I work at a data center regulated by a military company. We have a very strict no phone policy. Since this policy was made by the company, it basically trumps everyone's position in the office. My desk is located near my boss who has an office. When he gets in, he has meeting after meeting to go to, so it's typical for him to come in, throw his stuff down, and leave for the day's meetings. The thing is, he has the annoying habit of leaving his phone on the desk, on loud, so when his alarm goes off, it blares out everything else. I'm a systems administrator, so my job is to help users with their access to our systems. Part of this is calling them, and when I do, they tell me all the time that they couldn't hear me over the alarm. Our clients are all over the world, and some even deemed it disrespectful from all the background noise. One day, when my boss had done his typical routine of leaving, I asked him if he could turn off his alarm. I've been getting complaints from the users. Son, when you're in my position, you can do whatever you want, so shut up and do what I pay you for. I have no choice because I honestly don't know what to do in this situation. Anyway, he leaves and I carry on. I get a call from one of our top clients in Japan about one of our users having trouble accessing applications. Midway through this call, my boss's phone alarm goes off again, and the user starts complaining about the call experience. I had enough and told the user to give me a few seconds so I could silence the phone alarm. Obviously, I can't get into the phone so I press any key that usually silences alarms. While I'm doing this, the boss walks in and catches me. What the flip are you doing in my office? I had to get the F out and don't ever touch my stuff again or you're fired, you contractor piece of garbage. Sir, our Japanese clients are complaining about the background noise and call quality. You heard me. Don't touch my stuff and let them complain. I'm the boss here. He also added that if anyone wanted to challenge him, try it. I'm thick skinned, but this moment I was heated. I sat down, closed my eyes, and took a deep breath. I looked down on my desk to see a flashing light indicating someone on the phone and I had completely forgotten about the client on the other end. I picked up the phone and turned mute off so the user could hear me again. Before the user could even speak, my boss's alarm starts going off. The user eventually hangs up from frustration. Cue malicious compliance. I got the great idea that if I could get enough users to complain about the phone, something could happen. About 80% of the calls I took had the alarm noise in the background. I went as far as to roll my chair as close to my boss's door as possible for the alarm to be as loud as possible. Users begged me to turn it off, but I told them I couldn't. I honestly wasn't trying to be a dick to users, but my hands were tied and the boss wouldn't do anything. I needed to either leave or make him leave. Users kept complaining. I kept refusing to touch the phone. They started submitting bad reviews for me until one day I get an email to meet our HR rep about my performance. As we went over everything, I noted that it was my boss's phone and that's what the users were complaining about. Oh, I mentioned I couldn't touch it either and how he was threatening to fire me. The HR rep's jaw dropped. I don't know immediately what happened, but by the end of the day, I get another email stating that the boss didn't work there anymore and to disable his account and secure his common access card. I processed this request with the biggest grin, cheek to cheek. I found out later that it was the phone, not the bad language that he got fired for. Also, for anyone who doesn't know, if you get caught with your phone in a secure location, they take it and don't give it back due to the risk of compromised data. He had a brand new iPhone 11 Pro Max. 
Down in the comments, a bunch of people were discussing trying to figure out why he would need so many alarms. Clearly, it was his time to be a douchebag alarm. Our next Reddit post is from Double Peaks JJ. Several years ago, I went to return a library book to discover that a drink had spilled on it in my bag. The librarian handling returns sighed and said I'd have to have the damage assessed. Of course, the result was I had to pay for the book. After an eternity of checking, queuing, and searching the system for a price, I paid £13.50, despite the RRP printed on the back being £8.99. She takes the book and is about to drop it in the returns bin with all the other normal returns when I say, hang on, I paid for it, that's my book now, right? She shrugs and says sure, but then starts to remove the Property of City Library sticker. As she pulls at it, the page starts to tear. Whoa, don't damage my book now, I quip. She glared back at me as if I was really pushing it and continued to pull. In probably the only moments of my life my brain worked fast enough, I came out with, if you damage my book in any way, I'll have to charge you for that. She let out a squealing noise and stormed off into the backstaff only area, then returned with her boss who thrust the book in my hand and says, just take it and leave. <laughs> OP, that librarian had it coming. And we have a similar story from Tangled Up Life down in the comments. My mom did that with a textbook once. The vice principal was truly awful. My mom went over her head to the superintendent once and from then on, the VP hated her. My mom had five kids in the school, so they had clashes quite often. Well, my brother was being charged for a damaged book. So damaged, my mom had to pay the replacement value. It was absolutely damaged, but not totaled. My mom argued it with the teacher a couple of times and then was referred to the vice principal. She went to the office and ended up paying for the book. My mom said, okay, I'd like to have my book, please. The vice principal said, but we're going to use it again next year. You just charged me for it because it was too damaged for you to use next year. I paid for it and I'd like my book, please. The vice principal grudgingly hands it over. <laughs> My mom rips all the pages out of the book and tosses them in the VP's office trash can. Thanks! Our next Reddit post is from Eric Cartmenes. When I was 19 years old and a fresh high school graduate, or my country's equivalent, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. The one thing I did know is that I needed money, so I started applying for all kinds of jobs. After a few days of writing applications, going to interviews, and waiting nervously for replies, I was hired as a full-time sales assistant at an international company making smartphones, TVs, and other electronic gadgets. Said company was in the process of opening their first official store in my country, and I, as I was hired about three months before they were due to open, helped them however I could. I created one-pagers, basically posters that shows all the hardware inside a device plus a picture, translated manuals, put security tags on products, etc. Whatever they wanted me to do, I did, sometimes until late at night, still foolishly thinking that this initiative would maybe be recognized in one shape or another. Alongside me, they hired four other people, three more sales assistants and a store manager, all of whom were young and ambitious, just like me. The grand opening went very well. Business was booming for the first two weeks and everything seemed fine. That's where the problem started. The first thing we realized we didn't have were guidelines on how to handle returns and warranty cases. As the company's electronics had been available online long before the store opened, some people now started bringing in their devices to get them fixed or swapped out, none of which we knew how to handle. This annoyed a lot of customers. Being given the information that only devices bought at our specific store would be handled under warranty only made things worse for us. We were getting abuse on a daily basis that ranged from curse words to death threats. Once, we even had to call security because a customer was threatening us. This stress caused one of my colleagues to quit, understandably. This, as it turned out, was only the tip of the iceberg. Some of the other problems we had included having a break room with no access to fresh water, no fridge, no microwave, and of course, no bathroom. All big no-nos where I live. Resupply came in sporadically at best. Sometimes we were resupplied twice a week. Sometimes there were no deliveries for three weeks, making it very hard for us to tell our customers when their devices would be arriving. The store manager was so incompetent, he couldn't even finish our schedules three days in advance. Although, giving the schedule two weeks in advance is mandatory. 
One of my colleagues thought F this about a month after our grand opening and went on sick leave, which where I live basically gives you immunity from getting fired. So now we were two men down. The bosses upstairs apparently wanted us to provide tech support over the phone, which again, none of us were trained to do. We did our best, but only really ended up with more threats in addition to having our official store number constantly blocked by these calls. Also, we were expected to take over social media communications as well, meaning we now had to answer questions on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, etc., putting even more strain on our small team. In the end, the manager couldn't deal with the stress anymore and broke down about two months after opening. He even sought psychological counseling after quitting. While I was sad to see him go, I thought that now my time had come to prove myself. I took over most of his duties, still only earning about half of what the manager made. Naively, I worked 60 to 70 hour weeks for almost three months straight, still thinking that this would somehow pay off. I made sure to tell my bosses how much more I did than we agreed upon in my contract, but they didn't seem to care. That is, until our sales figures dropped. All of a sudden, I had two of them come into the store unannounced, basically drag me into a back room and start lecturing me on how badly the store is performing. The conversation went something like this. So, why would you say the store's sales performance has dropped so much since the manager left? Well, a lot of customers are unhappy with the way we... Our products are very competitive. Why are you still struggling to sell them? Me, slightly disgruntled. Well, sir, as I was trying to say, the customers are not happy with our service and running a store with almost two employees is almost impossible. If we could hire two more assistants, maybe we could focus better on our numbers. The interviews for these positions are ongoing. You will have new employees soon. But you were hired for a reason, so would you just do your effing job? Yes, sir. After that meeting, I felt defeated. Doing all this extra work, staying late, taking responsibility for things I had no business taking responsibility for, the threats, the uncertainty, the stress, the sleep deprivation, all for nothing. And that's when it clicked in my head. F those guys. They wanted me to do my job, fine. From now on, I would do exactly what my job description says. Nothing more, nothing less. The next day, I came in early, opened the store, everything normal. Until the first tech support call came in. I picked up the phone and after listening to what the caller wanted, told them that I was only a sales assistant and therefore not qualified to answer their questions. Hanging up the phone without saying goodbye, a postman came in with some special documents for the store manager requiring a signature. I said, nope, sorry, not gonna sign that. I'm not a manager. After being informed that these were court documents and need to be signed for immediately, I just shrugged and said, not my problem, just doing my job here, man. Later that day, after my colleague had arrived, we got a delivery of new product for the store. The delivery guy handed me a manifest asking for a signature. Again, I declined, stating that I was just doing my job and the manager would have to sign that. After making it clear to him that there wasn't a manager on site, he left, taking all the new product with him, product which we desperately needed. But I was beyond caring at this point. About 15 minutes later, I got a call from Boss One asking me why no one had signed for the delivery. I told him that, as there was no manager on site, nobody there was allowed to sign that document. After a few choice words, he hung up the phone and I went back to work, chatting with customers and generally not caring about anything. Half an hour later, Boss 1 and 2 descended onto me. They rushed into the store, demanding an explanation for my behavior. I simply replied, I'm just doing my job, sir, just like you asked me to do. What the F do you mean? Then why has nobody accepted today's delivery or the documents we've sent you? Well, that's the manager's job. I'm not a manager. Yes, you effing are. What the hell are you talking about? Uh, no. Not only would my pay be pretty poor for all the work I'm doing, my contract clearly states that I'm a sales assistant and, as such, shall only fulfill duties related to that position. And who the hell is supposed to do the manager's job if not for you? I don't know, but I would gladly do it if you doubled my salary, of course. Ha ha ha, he actually laughed in my face. Who the hell do you think you are? We can have you replaced with someone cheaper in a heartbeat. Okay then, go ahead, I quit. Effective immediately. Bye. And then, I just left. 
My remaining colleague, upon hearing me quit, also quit immediately, leaving our former bosses wide-eyed with no employees to run their store. I had also taken the liberty of informing the Board of Health and Labor about our working conditions, as well as getting myself legal counseling for some issues related to bonuses not being paid out. The store ended up having to completely shut down for about two weeks, until they had a skeleton crew back together to run it. The kicker? About a month after I quit, and with my lawsuit for unpaid wages now pending, I got a call from Boss One, telling me he wanted to accept my offer of doubling my salary to become a store manager. He said no one was willing to take the job now that word got around how awful things are in the store. The following conversation ensued. Frankly, Boss One, I used his first name here just to piss him off. I don't much like getting laughed at, so I'm afraid if you want me to come back, you're going to have to quadruple my initial pay. What? Are you insane? We can't afford that. How are we supp- I don't give a flip, Boss One. I really don't, but I've got an idea. How about you pull your head out of Boss 2's butt and just do your effing job? Click. I love how they complain about not being able to afford paying their employees, but in reality, what they really can't afford is having their store shut down indefinitely. If they had just paid these people a reasonable salary to begin with, they would have made so much more money. Our next Reddit post is from RDE42. Backstory. Back in 2010, I had my left eye removed due to cancer. It's no big problem, but obviously my field of vision on that side is not quite what it was. On with the story. I visited a local convenience store to pick up a couple of items. It's a very small store and there's no clear area to queue. Just two narrow aisles in front of the counter at right angles to each other. I collected my stuff and walked up to the counter just as someone was leaving it. I heard a small noise on my left and realized I had gone in front of someone waiting in the other aisle. I apologized, stepped back, and said, I can't see on that side. The guy smiled, but clearly didn't believe me and wanted to say so, although he didn't. Possibly because he had a young girl, probably about 10 years old with him. There was an unspoken, oh yeah, prove it. I was in a silly mood, so I took my prosthetic eye out and showed it to him. He was a bit shocked. The girl thought it was cool. I replaced my eye and let him finish buying his stuff. Then we have this, <laughs> this really good story from Eric the Red Canada down in the comments. This is my favorite story of all time. We played a lot of euchre in high school. We would sit in the cafeteria, so you'd be sitting next to your opponent, making cheating really easy if you were so inclined. One day, Petey was sitting to Nikki's left and said to Nikki, Nikki, stop looking at my cards. Petey, I can't look at your cards even if I want to. What do you mean? That's silly. Petey, I lost my left eye to cancer when I was three. I can't even see you right now. At this point, Petey was mortified, just absolutely embarrassed. He decided to make a quick joke to ease attention. So, Nikki, I hear your mom is hot. Petey, my mom died of cancer when I was 12. <laughs> it feels so awkward to laugh there, but oh my god, this poor Petey. At this point, our fearless protagonist knew when he was defeated. He dropped his cards and made his retreat from the cafeteria, never to be seen again. Our next Reddit post is from your Pokemon. My roommate and I attend a university where we're given 250 page per semester to print as part of our attendance. Well, we hardly used it since we have our own printer, so we went over to the print room and asked if we could have our 500 pages. They said that the pages were only for printing and not a quantity of letter paper we were entitled to, so we said okay. We then went to two of the computers in the print room, opened word to a blank document, and printed our pages out. We then walked out with that thick stack of paper without being noticed. There has not been, and there will likely not be, any fallout. Don't you just love it how universities charge $50,000 per semester and then nickel and dime you over paper? That was r slash malicious compliance, and if you like this video, then let me know by hitting that like button because it really helps my channel grow.